So some of you commented or got a couple emails where the gap videos go, and um, I did take them down. I uh, it's just been a real struggle for the last month or two uh, of feeling like I'm going through theological molasses. Ever since I did the Romans 9 videos, I felt like I was suddenly in quicksand where, like for example with Romans 9, it's almost impossible because of today's theological environment to talk about Romans 9 and really just get to what it says because you've got to prove that you're not a Calvinist while guarding against the over uh, emphasis on the sovereignty of man among free will Arminians and still try to get to the truth you know plus it's everybody's got such strong opinions about it and I can hear those arguments in my mind while I'm trying to do the Bible study and I'm navigating it's like those things are steering more than my enjoyment of the spirit and it was just really tough um, I felt like it was a real hack job and then after that I found myself doing a video about uh, the marriage model the Jewish wedding feast and how people are using it as a model for the rapture which I in one hand I don't really have a problem with but it's based on a misinterpretation of some, to, to make it fit the model you have to misinterpret some passages and that part bothered me so I found myself you know getting controversial there I did that message about you know how the wedding feast model that in the scriptures people are using implies that the church is under the new covenant and um in the parable of the ten virgins and that John 14 is a rapture chapter which that's the most popular everybody thinks John 14 is a rapture chapter and it's not it's a it's a regeneration chapter for the initiation of the church in that day that you will know that I am in my father and my father's in me and I and you and you and me and where he is that you may be also is in the father and he's going through death and resurrection to bring us into the triune God and that union was established when he was resurrected and when we believed we were regenerated we were made into the many abodes in the father's house it's not that he's going off to build a mansion and coming back to rapture the church although the, it is true that he's coming back to rapture the church and that is a marriage uh, concept Forcing John 14 into the model of the marriage, uh, Jewish marriage ritual, dissolved the meaning of John 14. And that's where I really have had the issue. So, uh, so anyway, I did that. Then, th that was more molasses and quicksand I felt like I was walking through. And then, somebody asked me, because I had said at some point that man's dominion was partly the answer of spiritual warfare to the fall of Satan and how God is going to head up the universe through a redeemed humanity. That's why he gave us the dominion and that's why Satan hates us so much, right? And uh, to talk about that, they, they wanted more explanation on that. Well, I had to place, okay, when did the angels fall? Well, that happened before the fall of man. And, of course, that opened the door to the gap theory, which to me is not about geological ages or evolution and long periods of time versus a 24-hour uh, day. It's about when did Satan fall and what is the nature of the warfare we find ourselves in. But the molasses happened where, just like in the Calvinist thing, or the Romans 9 thing, I had to prove I'm not a Calvinist while the contending against the Arminian tendencies and everything, so it's hard to even get to the word, all of a sudden I found myself debating all these points about long uh, history of the earth versus the weak. I am a weak create. I, I, am, I am a 
one week creationist, I just happen to think that the Bible does not require dogmatically that I understand that those days are 24 hour periods. Be and, and I laid all that out, you know, and I'm like, why am I even talking about this? That's not what I want to talk about or what I care about at all. It's just that you can't talk, now you can't talk about the spiritual warfare we're in and the origins of it and what happened and what the Bible reveals without triggering all these different contentions back and forth. And it reminds me of when Paul was brought before, um, you know, the Romans because he was, he was charged of stirring up sedition and disturbing the peace. And he said, hey, can I talk to the Jews for a second? And he turns around and there's this crowd of Sadducees and Pharisees. And in calculation, he says, brethren, I stand before you because of the question of the resurrection from the dead. And it was a bomb. It was like he dropped a bomb on the group and they all started arguing with each other because the Sadducees believe one thing and the Pharisees believe another. And he knew he could, pre he could predict that that's what would happen so that he could demonstrate, look, I'm not the one stirring this up. This is, this is who these people are. Look at, well, look at them, you know? And I'm not saying that anybody on my wall is like that. I'm just saying that the environment I feel myself in theologically has been making it really hard for me to enjoy the word and just minister nourishment from the word, from the spirit for like a month. It seems like a theme. Where every message I give, it's just like I'm going through molasses. Not because of the topic I'm even dealing with, but because of all the considerations it's associated with. You know, I know that gap theory was presented in the context of people wanting to justify uh, the secular view of long ages and long periods of time and stuff, and I don't believe in that. I know carbon theory is... Uh, bunk, and I know they're lying when they stretch out the universe to billions of years, and the reason they do it is because they want to give enough time for randomness to produce something, and they still haven't given enough time for it, you know, no matter how long they stretch out the universe. All that stuff, you know, I'm not arguing against any of that, and I can see why it's sensitive. I have kids. I don't, I think, and they go to public school. I don't want my kid believing in evolution and all that. However, when I consider Genesis and I consider what I see in, in Genesis 1 and 2 you know 1 1 and 2 and the darkness that was on the face of the deep and all that I don't I'm not thinking like that I'm thinking about the fall of the angels and what is God's plan what is his purpose to head up this universe when did the problems begin you know now you can disagree with me about that but if you're disagreeing with me because it upsets your that because you're tenaciously holding on to all the years you've invested in proving 24 day hour day creation then you and I aren't having the same conversation and that's the same thing with Romans 9 you know if you can't if I can't talk about God's purpose in election without freaking out all the people who've invested all of their time in making sure that they're not Calvinists, and here's why. It's like, then we're not having the same conversation. And so now I'm suddenly having to have 15 conversations in one conversation, if that makes sense. So finally, I was like, okay, someone, two people sent me articles with lots of different points about the gap theory and why it was a problem. And I, there were a lot of erroneous things stated in those articles. But then I would have to spin out video after video because I'm the kind of person who will go to that length. Like once I see something, I'm gonna talk it to death, you know? And I'm like, I'm feeling less and less enjoyment. And I'm just like, this is not what I, that, this isn't why I wanted to have a channel <laughs> to just bring up controversy and stir up debates and interest. That's not my purpose, believe it or not. I don't know why it's been so controversial lately or why why it's been... And, and I told you guys that before Romans 9, I almost thought I was done with my channel because I was just like, I feel like I've said what I am called to say. Um, 
I'm going through the Colossians messages now the same way I do with the Hebrews messages, and I'm making those into a book, and that'll be an audio book, and I find that very edifying. And I might do the same with Romans, you know. Um, but I'm just, now I need prayer. I, I'm asking for prayer that anybody who, you know, I've lost quite a few subscribers in this process, and now I have new ones, but like a lot of my old time favorites are gone. I have no idea where some of the people went. They're no longer watching me that were people that were there from the beginning, you know? So I don't know. Did I lose focus? Um, and you know, we're not supposed to do this all alone. We're supposed to have fellowship and we're not supposed to be the man, you know, to know everything. So I'm opening up and saying, look, I could use prayer that I would have utterance that I'd have a simple heart that I would know what God's wanting me to do and that I would bring out the food in season, you know, that would actually nourish people and build them up in the faith, uh, and get out of this molasses. And, and some of it's in my mind. A lot of it is just like my mind is churning where if I say something, I know, oh, that's going to stir up these people. Oh, that's going to stir up those people. You know, I hate that. I wish I could just speak and let the results be what they are. You know, I need to be, I need to be. And I don't know, maybe something struck my confidence in the last couple months. I've, it's been a real hard time. And I think other people are feeling it too. There's just some warfare going on. But so, yeah, we need your prayer. If we have a channel, we just seriously request your prayer. Other thing, I, I've mentioned her many times, Petra Renatus. Please check out her channel if you have not. I consider her, as I said this in my post, that it's, a, it's like a sister channel. She's feeding the same... She's feeding on the same truth that I am and focusing on sanctification by the cross, by faith not by works and uh, it's really good and her messages are short and very succinct but very good um, alright, talk to you later